In this economy, it is not always practical to take your kids into a photo studio to have professional photographs taken, but you don't have to hire someone to get a good shot. Professional photographer, author, and teacher Erin Manning is here to give us some tips for at-home photography, and we're so glad you came in. Thanks, Julie. Good to be here. It's good to have you. Now, you, as a professional photographer, have taken some beautiful pictures. Thank and you. you give some great tips in your book. This is your book here, Portrait and Candid Photography. Tell us a little bit about what we'll learn from reading your book. Oh, all kinds of things. Because I need to know how to take a good picture of my kids. <laughs> all kinds of things. I'm full of tips and techniques. Well, now that everyone has a digital camera, they want to take better shots. Yeah. So I try to cover a lot of the issues that go on with that in my book, having to do with location and lighting, composition, and then all the unique challenges that happen with taking pictures of babies and children and because adults. Because they don't and stay portraits. still. Oh, right. no. Oh, no. And action shots. So try to kind of cover the gamut with everything. And I think people really break out their cameras when the holidays come around. So that's a good time to learn what to do and what not to do because yes. it makes a big difference in holiday cards like these, right? Absolutely. You want your best shot to go out, right? Of yes. your family on Definitely. your holiday card. Definitely. So tell us what you can do to make that difference. Oh, there are all kinds of things. First off, I like to start with composing your shot. Mm -hmm. So you never want to put someone just plunk right in the middle of the shot. You want to mix it up a little bit. Consider the rule of thirds. Okay. And that's something where you place someone a little off center. You want to visually divide your scene into thirds like a tic-tac-toe board and then place something at one or more of those intersections to create a more compelling shot. Okay, so now we've we've all heard that taking pictures of kids isn't easy, but you say it makes a big difference if you get down on their level. Tell us what we should do there. You do, because you know, taking pictures of people, you really want to connect with them. So mm -hmm. observe what they're doing, connect with them. When you get down on a child's level, it's a much more intimate and compelling shot because you're sort of with them on that level. And it's much more interesting to be right there with them. You can get beautiful eye shots that way too. Oh, I when love you're coming that. from up above, you might just get the top of their head and they're looking up like this maybe not such a great shot so when you come down it creates much more interesting image okay how about zooming now because I think sometimes people will go in and out physically they'll move but you don't have to do that just use the zoom exactly right? yes okay. every camera comes with a, a zoom a telephoto zoom and it's wonderful to, to fill the frame with that so instead of getting up really close to someone with your camera mm -hmm. that could distort their face and give them their that big nose look so what, what you want to do is stand back and give yourself room to zoom and then zoom in with your telephoto to fill the frame with their face, it's a much more flattering perspective. The family members are not going to appreciate the big nose. That's look. right. No, no giant <laughs> Every, noses. Everyone will want to see the pictures later. Yes. Now in your book you talk about this a really good piece of advice, mix it up. Tell everyone what that means. You know, taking a picture from the same distance and same angle all the time gets a little boring. Yes, you it want does. to mix it up. So think about all the different angles you can take photos from. And when you're in a scene, take a wide shot and then a medium shot and then a very close up detail shot. When you lay all those pictures out together, it's a much more interesting presentation. Make a great collage too. If Absolutely. You have really yeah. different. Now, backgrounds are a great idea. And you actually have brought some with you today. I'm standing in front of the North Pole here. Right. You can rent these, right, to give your pictures that special flair. You can really add a lot of pizzazz to your holiday photos just by renting these backdrops. You can rent them for like $29 for the week and wow. add some real interest to all your images. So it's not just the regular wall photo. You can add North Pole, Santa Claus, whatever it is. We have another is. one down in the front here. What a great idea to make a special photo that you can send out. Yes. Okay, and now that you have your background, you have your photo taken you can make some really special gifts that are that are really touching to someone and really personal. So many different things, everything from pillowcases to mouse pads, so cute. Um, coasters, cards, photos, in photographs, here we have magnets, magnets, and jewelry box, and even a tote this. bag. Even a tote bag. It's amazing. You can really put pictures anywhere now. If you could give just one piece of advice, what would be the biggest thing, the biggest maybe right thing or no no that you could tell? As far as taking photographs, yes. when you're taking a picture of someone, give them something to do because that way they get absorbed in that and they can give you some real authentic expressions. Erin Manning, so good to have you in. I think my photo albums will look a little different now. That's great. Really Thank appreciate you. having you. And to see a full selection of the backgrounds that you can rent, go to rentscenicbackgrounds.com. Thank you so much for watching Parents TV and we'll see you again soon.